Welcome back to Gale Force Winds Season 2. The Gale Force Winds Podcast is proudly sponsored by Newfound Marketing, a digital marketing agency located in St. John's, Newfoundland. Visit our website at newfoundmarketing.ca to find out how we can help your business grow. Newfound Marketing, a compliment to your marketing team. Fred George was awarded the Order of Nova Scotia in 2013 and the Meritorious Service Medal in 2016 for his unwavering dedication to Canadian Armed Forces personnel, their families, and veterans. Fred George is an extraordinarily successful businessman, a proud Nova Scotian, and one of Canada's greatest philanthropists. Mr. George immigrated to Nova Scotia when he was 19 with a dream of making a better life for his family. He grew his Halifax Mining Company into the largest gold and silver producer in Mexico. He is listed among Canada's top 10 CEOs, receiving numerous business awards, including the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Mining Society of Nova Scotia. In 2003, Mr. George rang the opening bell at the American Stock Exchange. Good morning, America. <laughs> Gammon Lake, Gammon Lake Board of Directors and Investor, very honored today to be listed on the American Stock Exchange. And today, we're not only gonna ring this bell proudly, but triumphantly. Thank you very much, and God bless America. All right. And in 2008, he rang the opening bell at the New York Stock Exchange as Gamma Gold was listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Mr. George has also earned a high level of respect from his peers for both his business success and community leadership and was invited by former President Bill Clinton to sit on his foundation board. Mr. George helped to build a new school for Bridgeway Academy, a local school for students with learning disabilities. The Fred George Gymnasium at the Sacred Heart School of Halifax and the Fred George Leadership Course at St. Francis Xavier University recognize his contributions. Mr. George has long supported the Navy, veterans, military families and Canada's peacekeeping efforts. For his dedication, he was appointed Honorary Captain of the Royal Canadian Navy and travelled to Afghanistan with Canada's military leaders to support our men and women in uniform. Fred George has built an exemplary life, making Nova Scotia a more caring place through his generous sharing of time and talents. Fred joins us on Gale Force Winds from his home in the Turks and Caicos. The interview was conducted the day after Fred and his wife organized an amazing gathering for a large number of officials from Turks and Caicos aboard HMCS Harry DeWolf while anchored off the coast of Turks and Caicos. And welcome to another edition of Gale Force Winds. And this is an exciting one, I'm not going to lie to you. We are in the beautiful Turks and Caicos, and I can't wait to get into conversation with our next guest. I'm Alan Dale, and with me as always, my good buddy from the east end of St. John's, Jerry Carew. How are you, Jerry? Well, you know, you always ask me that question, and it is a loaded question. We're going to get to you in a second, Fred. <laughs> It is, uh, all I can tell you is that it's been an incredible couple of days. We were in Greece four or five days ago, but yesterday, Alan, was without a doubt one of the most special days of my life. And spending four and a half hours in a fast rescue craft with this gentleman was something that I can only dream of. So I can't wait to just talk a little bit about that yesterday and delve into this man's life. I can't believe it, Jerry. It was one of the most uh, incredible days of your life. When I looked over it, your head was down and looked like you were going to die. But it was quite a day in the boat. Well, here we are. We're aboard. What's this vessel called? So, this is Papa 15. 
Papa 15, we're on the way to Harry the Wolf. There's a bit of a sea state. What would we call this sea state here today? Uh, maybe one and a half or two, maybe. Okay, I'm, I'm getting a little soft in my old age. I was thinking it was a bit more than that. But uh, this is quite the adventure. We've got uh, big boy catamaran uh, going alongside our starboard side. We're approaching the Harry the Wolf. This is a pretty exciting experience for me. I spent time in the Navy in the mid 80s and I've been out over 30 years. I really appreciate uh, everybody that's put this thing together and I'm telling you one thing, we are proud of our sailors and we're gonna work hard today to record their stories in their office. And here we are on board one of the rescue boats off Harry the Wolf, about to board HMTS Harry the Wolf. Quite a sea state going right now, heavy, heavy swell, but we're on one of the Rodsboro boats built right in Nova Scotia. This is a fantastic Canadian innovation. We're bouncing around the ocean like you wouldn't believe, but the, she the seats are actually on shocks, so you don't feel an, a, you don't feel a thing. This here is a real Canadian treasure built right in Nova Scotia and the ship we're about to go on Keep going. and the ship we're about to go on also built in Nova Scotia. This is all Canada all the time right in the middle of the Caribbean and we're surrounded by some wonderful people with us right here. Wins the Force 8 Hometown Edition right here on board HMCS Harry the Wolf off the coast of the Turks and Caicos in the beautiful Caribbean Sea. And what a pleasure it is to be in conversation with sailors of the Royal Canadian Navy. And I can't think of a guy that must be so proud to be standing in his shoes right today, but the commanding officer of this amazing vessel. Tell me about how you feel about the crew on board. Well, I'm just going to say that when I came on board, I was absolutely amazed, awestruck, whatever you want to call it, about the the morale and the uh, how just great spirits the crew was in. After, you know, after being at sea for four months, you think they'd be a little down and out, but I tell you, I've never seen a crew more ecstatic and more upbeat than this crew that's on here right now. Hi there. Thank you, Alan, for receiving me today. Um, my name is Jill Marcou. I'm a Lieutenant Navy. I work for the Public Affair uh, domain. So um, I've been in the military for 15 years now. Hi there. My name is uh, my name is Vincent, and I'm a logist logistician for the HMCS Harry the Wolf. My primary job is a material management technician, and I've been in the military since August 2018. And you're from where, Vinny? I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Pass that over. <laughs> I'll hold on to that. Oh, where are you Go ahead. From? Perfect. Thank you. Hello, my name is Caitlin Osenya. I am also from Winnipeg, Manitoba. I am a logistic department as well. I do financial service and administration for Royal Canadian Navy. Through Fred George's generous assistance, Gale Force Winds was able to record interviews with sailors at sea aboard HMCS Harry DeWolf. To see these interviews, visit galeforcewinds.com and click on Force 8 Hometowners. Fred George, why don't you take us into that boat yesterday and what was going on? Because I got to tell you, that was an impressive scene. Well, <laughs> let me tell you, Alan, I mean, God bless your boat. If I knew you guys were going to bring the gale force wind with you, I would have not invited you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I mean, I know you call yourself gale, gale force wind, and that's what we had yesterday. Yeah. We always have the wind here from the south, and we figured out the harbor should be flat. But yesterday was northeasterly wind, and you can see the swell. We have five, six foot swell. It's a little bit hard on the ship. What a day, I mean, having uh, Harry the Wolf one of our newest ship, anchor here in Turkish Keiko, in Providential, Grace Bay Beach, one of the leading beach in the world. Mm -hmm. What an unbelievable moment for me to witness our new built ship anchor right here in the front, everybody to see. Yeah, but to witness, Fred, but you made it happen. You didn't witness it, you made it happen. And what Jerry and I witnessed yesterday yeah. was a guy in the heat of the moment and everything was turning against you. The, the, the ocean turned against you at the last minute to say, Fred, you're not gonna make this happen. But you didn't give up, Fred. You um, did not give up. As you know, Alan, I mean, give up. Failure is when you stop trying. Right. 
and this is, doesn't exist in my vocabulary. The ocean got bigger, and the idea and the opportunity in my head got bigger also. <laughs> I always said difficult, but never impossible. Mm -hmm. We will find a way. Yeah. And yesterday, my God, did we ever find <laughs> a way. As you know, when we tried to pull the catamaran and, and, and the roller was so big and catamaran going up and down in the air and a telescope, step ladder, we didn't want any accident to happen. That's why I stopped it immediately and I said, let's go to B plan. And the B plan was those ribs we built also in Nova Scotia. Ribs being the fast rescue craft, right? Fast rescue craft. Which you and I and Alan spent four and a half hours in. Four and a half Not hours. Not necessarily in. designed for four and a half hours <laughs> in 30 degrees, correct? <laughs> Absolutely. That's not what they designed for, but that's what it took yeah. for us to do to make sure all our guests are going to be safe. And I don't care if we would have to spend 10 hours, we will never stop till we make sure the job was going to take a place, is going to be perfect and flawless. Should we get a, uh, maybe get Fred, did, did we talk about so what we were doing? So let me. I don't think we got into that. So this is a great introduction into what we're doing. So for our guests, Honorary Captain Fred George is a captain in the Royal Canadian Navy and Fred organized Canada's newest warship, the HMCS Harry DeWolf, to visit his winter residence in the Turks and Caicos. And it all seems like a pretty easy thing to do, but let me tell you, a lot of planning went into it right up to the very last minute and it all came off without a hitch. The sailors on that ship, they had a wonderful time. The guests from the Turks and Caicos, of which there was many, absolutely. absolutely enjoyed themselves. And it came down to Captain Fred George planning. So that's why we're in conversation with Fred George, because it's guys like this that won't take no for an answer. Even when everything is turning against them, they keep on going. And that's a great way to start the podcast. Fred, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where do you come from? Uh, where do I come from? Well... Where do you want me to start? Way I to mean, start way back. Way back, 1976, when I came to Canada. 1976. This is after the uh, civil war in Lebanon. I was 19 years of age. At that time, we were 54 students in my class. And let me tell you, 50 of them died, and only four of us survived. So my father is a civil engineer. He brought us to Canada. And that's where it all started in Halifax, Nova Scotia. So you came to Halifax, how old were you when you came into Halifax? 19 years old. 19 years old, and where did life start for you there? Working at Dominion store, double shift. Nothing wrong with Dominion. I love it, right? it was a great way to start. Great way, for sure, so two shifts, tell me about that. Two shifts, well what happened is, I was the oldest boys in the family, and my father, he found it too cold, you know, in the winter we arrived, it was like minus 20. <laughs> We're not used to that in Lebanon. What, what's the coldest it ever gets in Lebanon? Oh my God, I mean, uh, during the winter, you can uh, go to Cedar Mountain, ski, and you can go down to the beach and swim. So the coldest day would be 15 degrees, yeah. 20 degrees. But that's and, cold, minus 20. <laughs> yeah, minus 20, it's unheard of. So I had to find a way and get a two job. So I remember one of the night shift at the uh, worker at the Dominion got sick. So they asked who would like to volunteer. So I like to volunteer. So I start work 12 to 8. And 8 o'clock I go punch my second car 8 to 5. Go home, get there 6 o'clock. My mother cooked me a meal at 7. And you wash up, you clean up. 8.30 you go to bed. 11 she wake me up. I got to get back to work to 12. So I did this for two years. I was getting two check. I give check for my mother look after the family and I kept check for myself. That's where it all started. So, you know, but I mean, it's one thing to be working at Dominion, but you don't get this working at Dominion. Where was your next stop? You know, every man have a dream. And I happen to dream big. But as you know, you gotta crawl before you walk and you gotta walk before you run. And the trick is keep walking forward yeah. and don't stop. And what I did after that, I know how the countries build, and I appreciate Canada opening their door for us. And we keep doing this even now for all the new entrepreneurs who arrive to our country here. It's a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. We love everyone. 
we're multicultural. What I did at that time, uh, Alan, be honest with you, I, that I finished uh, with the Dominion store, I opened these video stores in the 80s, if you remember. Uh, yeah. Video was a big hit. Sure. People pay money to rent video. So I ended up running 14 video stores. After the video store, I opened a water company. Co Sugar I'm going to stop you. All right. <laughs> there you go. You know, and I find this, Alan, you know where I'm going with this. Entrepreneurs like yourself, Fred, they kind of gloss over the transition from a paycheck to actually starting video stores. Like, you're working at Dominion, and then you just said, you ended up with 14 video stores. How long was that idea in your head, and how long did it take you to put that into action? You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm one of those uh, businessmen, I'm very quick on the draw. A lot of people, they think for uh, probably uh, 90 minutes and do action 10 minutes. I think 10 minutes and I do action 90 minutes. So I don't waste time. You can't waste time. Uh, you don't want one day when you're ready to die and laying on your bed and you're 99 years old and say, I wish I would have done this. I wish, I'd rather say, too bad I did this. <laughs> or too bad I made that mistake. So when you have this kind of attitude and thinking forward, failure is not in your vocabulary. Because you can always get the job done. I always say my motto in life, Difficult, but never impossible. And people equally informed seldom disagree. Mm -hmm. So I made sure everyone around me was well informed. And to be successful in business, surround yourself with the good people. Yeah. That's what you gotta invest in. Right. Don't try to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at, I talked one time to Wayne Gretzky. He was a good friend of mine. We enjoy a good cigar every now and then. If you try to score the goal by yourself, you will never make it. You need the team around you. Yeah. And then you can score your goal and win in the end. And that's what I did. I built myself, I surrounded myself with very smart people. And the timing is everything. I had the right timing, the right people behind me. And that's how I made it happen. So one video store to 14. Yep. How long? That took uh, two years. Oh. Yeah. Two, two years. A little bit longer than, than I wanted to. <laughs> you know? So I want to be number one in the video, and, and my God, I mean, we had 14 video stores in all Halifax. And, uh, what was the name of the video company? New Release Video. Mm -hmm. New I release remember. Video. Yeah. yeah. New Release Video, then we opened Hollywood Video, then I kept branching off to different video stores. And before Blockbuster moved in, I knew it was the time to move release on. the video store and move on. Right. And at this time, the water, no one heard of drinking a bottle of water. Because people That's always right. use the tap. Yeah. And I know reading, uh, you know, I watched like Avion Water from France, from, it's what a beautiful idea. I said, we should start a water business here. And that's what I did. Because people at this time will start to go to the gym. They're not drinking pop as much. People moving into more healthy environment. And the best place to build a water company was Sugarloaf Mountain in, uh, in next to uh, Mount Saint Vincent, next to Cenevex. Right. right. Not Cenevex. Was a beautiful Sugarloaf Mountain. We were doing all the private label for Superstore, <laughs> for Walmart USA. I flew to Bentonville, USA, and we struck a deal with Walmart USA, and they were buying like 18 containers a week. What was that like, Fred, striking a deal with Walmart back in the day? That was big. Yeah, it was big. It's another step stone. And you want to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Then, after that, end up selling the company and moved into the gold business. And the gold story, that's a story by itself. Well, okay. a question. So you sold the water business yep. and moved into gold. How long between that transition? Well, to be honest with you, I know nothing about gold business. As you know, I was in the video, then I went yeah. to water. So I was approached with a company in Halifax at that time called Gammon Lake. And very good, prominent business people, lawyers, doctors, and uh, uh, engineer team. And they asked me to raise them the first $1 million. At that time, they were doing a play in Seabright, the old Seabright property, you know, Terry Coughlin Sr. used to own. And they were trying to mine gold in uh, Nova Scotia. So what I did, I, I believed in this business uh, 
friends who I know. So I raised them the first million dollars from my friend, my close friend. So my landscaper will put a uh, 50,000. I mean, my uh, people like Tom who own Tim Horton store, Windy store, they put money. So I collected from friend and family a million dollars. After one year, Briax took a place. And we all know the Briax story. It was one of the biggest disasters in the history where the stock plunged from a few hundred dollars to a penny. So I got approached by the gaming team and they were going to shut down the company at that time. And they said, uh, tell my uh, investors to write off their losses. Well, my investor, they had 20,000 RSP. They got no gain to write the losses off. How can I go to my friend and say, you just lost your money? So I couldn't live with myself. So what I did, I approached the team. So gentlemen, if you want to leave, don't shut it down. I become a president chairman, and I'll show you how to do it during a tough time. And that's what started it all. But you must have really felt the pressure. You, you've got your landscaper investing yeah. the life savings, probably. Did you, you felt the pressure? 100%. I, I, could not, I could not face none of my friends. No. They all put the money because they believe in me. I've been successful in everything I did. And they witnessed it happen along the way. I don't want to ask him, put a 50,000. I'll give you guys name. Ronnie Albert, he ran RJP Landscaping. He put the first $50,000. And 50 cents a share, we give him 100,000 share. How can you look at the guy and say, oh, Ronnie, you just lost all your RSP money. I couldn't live by myself. And so many other friends and family, I can go on and on. We got a list of 1,000 investors. So that's what really drive me into, I'll go in there and I will find a way. Yeah. Because it's not about you then, right, Fred? It's about all those friends and family, and it's bigger than you, right? Does that mean I fail? Yeah. And fail is not in my vocabulary. I had to find a way. I always said, difficult but not impossible. <laughs> if they can fly and land on the moon, I'm sure I can find a way and fix that gold company. Right. You know, Barrick, not smarter than us, yeah. or any other big company. So then, I joined the company, and to give it to you in the short, in five years, we took the company from five million to 2.4 billion. Wow. And I become the first Canadian in Nova Scotia and in Newfoundland and the PI and New Brunswick to ring the New York Stock Exchange. Oh. It was the proudest day of my life. Tell me about that feeling. Tell oh. me about going down there and ringing that bell. Oh my God. You, you showed us a video of that. You rang that bell. How many <laughs> times did you hit it? Well, let me tell you what happened. They changed, they changed the law after well, we hit it. They asked my wife, Nelly, what's your lucky number? And my wife said, 13. Excuse me? So whatever your wife's lucky number, you ring the bell. And they didn't expect my wife to say 13 <laughs> because 13, they don't like that number. Some elevator didn't have 13 floor. Uh. But my wife was born on the 13. It was the luckiest day when I met her. So if 13 your lucky number, that means you don't have a bad number. So I went on and I rang that bell 13 times. Standing ovation of everyone. It was a perfect day for us. The most proud day in my life. Fred George, who started working at Dominion Store, all the way to the New York Stock Exchange. I mean, my family and I, we were very proud. I can only imagine, Fred. I, it, it, I can feel the excitement now when you talk about it. Yeah. I can only imagine what it was like in the day. Now, y you mentioned your wife and the luckiest day of your life meeting yeah. her. Jerry and I are fortunate we've got very supportive spouses that allow us to do mm. and dream and do things that we want to do. I met your wife. I had the pleasure of meeting your wife last night on board a Canadian warship off the coast of the Turks and Caribbean. Tell me about what that support and that grounding means to you. I mean, let me tell you this. Uh, having our Canadian ship, as an army captain of the Royal Canadian Navy, my job is to open lots of doors for our Navy personnel. My job is to make sure everyone around the world know about our Canadian Navy. Our Canadian Navy, they do unbelievable job around the world, but most of the time goes unnoticed. And that used to hurt me a lot. We want, uh, always we, we, we sometimes complain about our men, women in uniform. But if a disaster struck, we say, where's our Navy? Why they're not ready? Or where's our men, women in uniform? 
They expect them to be ready at all time, but nobody wants to do anything to support them during the flat time. In my job, I was going to make sure everyone must know how good and how professional our Navy and Royal Canadian Navy are. And yesterday, Alan, you witnessed yourself with that gale wind force storm with those big rollers. Our boys and men and women in uniform with the Royal Canadian Navy, they did an unbelievable job for our 50 distinguished guests. As you know, we had almost every minister, to governor, to premier, to chief of police was on that boat. And everybody learned how professional as the Royal Canadian Navy is. And I'm proud to see that. And at the same time, our ship, Harry the Wolf, now know the water of Turks and Caicos in case they ever need it for any emergency, this island is good friend of the Navy. That's what I do. 100% Fred, and not only that, but I sense that you've got a real passion for the Turks and Caicos too. You love this place as well. You love Canada, and you love this place as well. And I watched those ministers of government and the police chiefs and the commissioners and all interacting with you. You seem to be like the gel in the room that was making all those connections. Tell me what the Turks and Caicos means to you. You know, Turks and Caicos, first thing, it's a British colony. And as we are Royal Canadian Navy, as you know, we're also with the British like a commonwealth. Yeah. So having, and I believe one time Canada um, was gonna buy Turks and Caicos. That's what I was telling you yeah. the other day. Yeah. And that was the biggest mistake we did. <laughs> We let the British take it. That's right. And that's only three hours straight of flight from Halifax. Yeah. We should have had that beautiful island. Graves Bay Beach, one of the, uh, rank, one of the best beaches around the world. And the people here, they're so nice, they're so polite. I mean, at the Providential, only 12,000 personnel. You know, during the pandemic, it was a great place to be. If Canada would have an island, our citizens wouldn't have to go to different places and get refused on all these different port and airport. We could have had our own island. So that's why I choose Turks and Caicos. It's belong to the British, it's great people. They, everyone's very nice, as you witnessed yesterday. We had the whole government visited our ship, and now we're so proud to see the Royal Canadian Navy here. And now, uh, my dream came true. I got my Royal Canadian Navy with the Turks and Caicos government. They're all very close friends, as they all work together as one team. Well, I mean, you, you pulled it off. There's no doubt about it. You pulled that off. You had the Canadian Navy and all those uh, leaders of this country in one place at one time, and it was successful. Well, I just want to say that the issue, and I don't think we've talked about it, was that the ship was not alongside. It was actually at sea. At sea. I don't think we mentioned that. Did we at the beginning? No. No, we, we didn't. So that's yeah. why, Fred, that this was a very challenging maneuver. Right? Well, that's what I want to prove to the world what our Royal Canadian Navy is capable of doing. You see, the dock here is located in Grand Turks. But the action, it happened here in Providential, in Grace Bay Beach. So I want our ship to come here. And even knowing there's no dock, I said, we can do it just on anchor. And, even if, and yesterday, we didn't even have to anchor because the wind was a little bit high. As I mentioned before, you brought with you that gale force wind. It follows us everywhere. God bless we, you. <laughs> just so you know, Fred, we try to bring a positive experience. <laughs> gale force winds, Ooh. not, there's no D. There's no D, that's right? why I'm Although we brought a D yesterday. <laughs> no, you know what, again, this is, we showcase right. our RCN, how capable they were during this, really, yeah. uh, rough sea, we'd be able to Pluck these 50 guests from our ribs right to on the top of the deck on the Harry the Wolf. It was an unbelievable scene. This is how the boat go down at the end. We're going to lower them down and we're going to bring them up. We're going to bring all our guests down way tonight. But we're going to make it happen. Here we go, it's in the water. And they were so impressed. And now they assure themselves if we ever need someone, is the Royal Canadian Navy. If they can do this with ease, this is who we need to be friends with. And that's what we accomplished to do yesterday, as you saw. And at the same time, I must, let's not forget, my wife, which is one of the best sommeliers in Canada, and God bless her, she brought all the Nova Scotia sparkling, 
on Harry the Wolf before. I, I can see her in the background there, you waving to her. Yeah, waving to her, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you saw, you witnessed yesterday, how she demonstrated yep. to everyone live on the island here, how great the sparkling is, and she did it in such a professional way. I wish I could repeat it, but it's not my motto. As you know, I always enjoy good cigar, but now she did a good job promoting Nova Scotia yesterday on Harry the Wolf. The crew, the whole crew who did unbelievable, exceptional job. Please round of applause for the crew who did a phenomenal job. And now what we're going to do, we're going to start this part of the ship, and we're going to start lined up the first 12 guests to go, and this way we can make it home safely before it gets dark. Thank you all for coming. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and we're going to be starting the sparking momentarily. Thank you so much, and thank you for coming. Not only promoting the Navy, you're promoting your country, your province. Everywhere you go, good things are following you around. What's next? What's on the horizon? <laughs> what are you building next? As you know, there's always something on the horizon. But this is what we're going to leave it as a, as a surprise okay. for your audience for the next uh, podcast, yes. for the next episode. Fred, there's one thing about you. There's a lot of episodes. Absolutely. There's a lot of episodes to be uh, to look into. I've heard stories of you hitting golf balls blindfolded with Bill Clinton, look, Bill Clinton looking on in awe. I've heard incredible stories of things that you've done. We'll leave those for another time because Absolutely. a lot of people are going to want to hear about it. Fred, I want to leave the podcast uh, with my own thoughts. What I witnessed yesterday was incredibly impressive. I saw a Navy that wasn't willing to give up, and I saw an honorary captain that wasn't willing to give up, and at the end of the day, we gave the sailors an amazing experience, and you gave the people of Turks and Caicos an amazing experience. You celebrated Nova Scotia, celebrated Canada, everybody won. It was an incredible thing to watch uh, unfold, even as we were getting bounced around for four hours in that boat. I knew in the back of my mind it was going to happen because I could see that you weren't going to give up and that was incredibly impressive. So Fred, thanks very much for everything that you do for our country, for our Navy and for the province of Nova Scotia. And I like to leave the podcast with my own piece of advice and quite frankly, the world needs more Fred George. So <laughs> thanks very much, Fred. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, and I'm going to say something as well, uh, Fred, you know, I'm incredibly proud of those Canadian sailors. Yes. And this might sound a little weird, but I, because I don't know you, I know <laughs> of you, yeah. but I'm proud of you. Like a young boy from Lebanon came and did what he's done. We scratched the surface, this ladies and gentlemen, scratched it. We scratched it with a butter knife. <laughs> Fred? I'm proud of you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just so happy that you agreed to share a little bit of this with us. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, you and Alan. And thanks for both of you coming all the way from Canada to, to Turks and Keiko to really cover that wonderful story for our newest ship, Harry the Wolf. I'm very proud of both of you. Uh, you guys you. both are, you made us very proud Canadian. Uh, thank you so much kind. for coming. Very kind. Thank you. for tuning in to Gale Force Winds. That's Gale Force Winds, W-I-N-S dot com.